what is the Negra 2 movement? How do we connect it to today? Destiny Carmichael, Arden LeBlanc, Donald Wrench, Jalen Nelson, Peyton Watkins, Robert Davis, Shania Frazier, Tiana Garrett, Vanessa Wilson, and Kevin Chisholm. This is our presentation cover. It covers the linkage to the Harlem Renaissance, answering the question, how did the Harlem Renaissance connect and influence the negritude movement? It covers the linkage to modern society, answering the question, how did the negritude movement influence modern society and black culture today? It covers connecting people, answering the question, how did African Americans who were influenced in Europe contribute their literature to create the negritude movement? And it also covers the chronological order and important events, answering the question, what events in the negritude movement influenced the path that it had over African American culture? What is the negritude movement? The literary movement Negritude was born out of the Paris intellectual environment of the 1930s and 1940s. It is a product of Black writers joining together through the French language to assert their cultural identity. What is the social identity they were searching for? They found solidarity in their common ideal of affirming pride in their shared Black identity and African heritage and reclaiming African self-determination, self-reliance, and self-respect. Negritude Movement Timeline Around 1923, Paulette and Jeanne Nadal started the Claw Mart Salon, where artists, writers, and other intellectuals throughout the Black diaspora came together and discussed what are ultimately the ideals of the Negritude Movement. Amy Cesar, Leon de Moss, and Leopold Sanghor, the fathers of the Negritude Movement, met in 1931 in Paris. Paulette Nadal and the Haitian Dr. Leo Saju began to publish the Review of the Black World in 1931, which began to provoke thought for the movement. César launched the magazine The Black Student along with De Moss and Leopold Senghor in 1934. Leon De Moss published his Pigments in 1937, which argue against slavery, colonial assimilation, segregation, and the rejection of cultural self. Amy Cesar coined the term negritude in his notebook of a return to the native land in 1939. In 1947, with the encouragement of a host of famous French intellectuals, as well as Senghor and Cesar, a new journal, Presence Africaine, began publication in Paris under the direction of the younger Senegalese intellectual, Alion Diop. Negritude Movement Timeline Sanghor's Anthology of New Black and Malgasy Poetry in the French Language was published in 1948. This is significant because it opened the discussion for people from African descent to become educated as new and different forms of freedom. It is in a way that men of color, especially Negroes, have been able to access not only the freedom of the citizen, but more importantly, that personal life which only culture gives. Sanghor. In 1948, Jane Paul Sarti sums up and analyzes the Negritude movement in an essay entitled The Black Orpheus. Leopold Senghor became the first elected president of the Republic of Senegal in 1960. and the Negritude movement. The Harlem Renaissance was the explosion of literature and art from black intellectuals and artists in New York City during the mid-1910s. The focus of these intellectuals and artists was to cultivate Black expression in a hostile environment. The Negritude movement was influenced by the Harlem Renaissance, which was itself influenced by the New Negro movement. The politics of the New Negro movement and the poetics of the Harlem Renaissance greatly influenced the Negritude movement. The Negritude movement continued to show the variation between the moderate old Negroes and the militant new Negroes that were focused on during the Harlem Renaissance and the New Negro movement. Important members of the Harlem Renaissance that fled the U.S. to escape racism and segregation include Langston Hughes, who traveled to Spain in 1937 to cover the Spanish Civil War for an African-American newspaper. Senghor occasionally read some of Hughes' work of poetry in Review of the Black World. James Weldon Johnson, his produced music for Broadway shows that tour toured Euro Europe in the early 1900s. Senghor titled Johnson as the spiritual founder of Negritude Values for his dedication to promoting pride in Black culture. Claude McKay, a Jamaican poet and writer whose novel Banjo, A Story Without a Plot, in 1929, influenced Leonard Senghor, co-founder of the Negritude Movement. His famous words that contributed to the Harlem Renaissance were, if we must die. McKay first traveled to Europe in 1919, where he visited London and Russia. Literary geniuses, such as the ones listed above, helped push the movement of African Americans into European countries in order to find themselves and express their culture through literature.
Going to Paris symbolized freedom and the exploration of African Americans along with their identity. Harlem Renaissance Influence on the Negritude Movement The Harlem Renaissance had a large influence on the Negritude Movement due to the frequent travel of Harlem Renaissance leaders to Paris and spreading their ideals. The infusion of Black politics with Black aesthetics and Black poetics during the Harlem Renaissance was the focus of the Negritude Movement. The Negritude Movement and the Harlem Renaissance both shared the expression of Pan-Africanism and the African diaspora in their respective movements. Artistic activism was present but different in the literature of both movements, but both pushed to reclaim Black identity through their works. Both movements appealed greatly to youth, especially those artistically and politically inclined. The fight for civil rights and social injustice was focused on during both the Harlem Renaissance and the Negritude Movement. Amy Cesar was born in Bass Point, Martinique in 1913. His first exploration in the African-American literature world began when he won a scholarship to study in Paris. Only three years after arriving in Paris in 1934, Cesar launched the magazine The Black Student along with Leon Gontran Damas and Senegalese Leopold Cedar Senghor. His piece of writing that coined the word negritude was Return to My Native Land in 1939. Cesar thought of negritude movement as the historical phenomenon that derived from the commonalities in the post-colonial history of Africans, mainly on the slave ships and plantations. The Fathers of the Negritude Movement, Léon de Moss. Léon de Moss was born in French Guyana in 1912. His journey in negritude began when he attended the University of Paris in 1929 which is where he met Aimé César and Leopold Senghor. De Moss, along with Senghor, was a founder of the Negritude Movement and was also the first Black writer to address colonization and the aftermath effect on these colonized places. His famous poetry collection, called Pigments, talked about the internalized racism and African and Afro-diasporic subjugation in colonization. De Moss was on Howard University's faculty until the time of his death in 1978. The Fathers of the Negritude Movement, Leopold Sedar Senghor. Leopold Senghor was the co-founder of the Negritude Movement along with Damas, who also worked his way up through the French educational system and held many prestigious positions in French government. While in France, Senghor was able to connect his political and literary philosophies and promote African enlightenment. In the aftermath of Senghor's career, he left behind a legacy of empowering African leaders and African independence. By jumpstarting the Negritude Movement, Senghor left behind a catalog of poems. Some of his more famous pieces of poetry are Nocturnes, written in 1961, and Chants d'Ombre. Women in the Negritude Movement, Jane Nerdal. Jane Nerdal was born in the 1900s in Martinique. The start of Jane's journey was moving to Paris in 1923. Along with her sister Pauletta, Jane studied classical literature and French at the Sorbonne. Her passions and essay topics included race and clash consciousness in the diaspora, Afro-Latin identity, European fetish of Black women, and so much more. Jeanne and her sister also opened up a tea shop that brought intellectual Blacks together called the Clarmart Salon, where they discussed the ideals of the negritude. Jeanne was recognized as the first promoter of this movement of the ideas so broadly exploited later by her sister. Women in the negritude movement, Paulette Nardal. Paulette Nardal was born in the French departmentalized island of Martinique in 1896. She moved to France to pursue her education along with several of her sisters. Paulette was one of the first to focus on African-American literature and studied classic Black American novels, such as Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Nardal heavily influenced the Negritude movement and the Harlem Renaissance movement by being a bridge between the two cultures through her translation and Pan-African journals. She is greatly known as being the first Black person to study at the Sorbonne. After her death, Cesar paid tributes to her as the initiator of the Negritude movement and named a square Fort de France after her as her honor. Women in the Negritude Movement, Suzanne Cesar. Suzanne Cesar was born on the island of Martinique in 1915. Cesar moved to France to pursue her education, and she also developed much artistic freedom as a poet. Cesar developed the concept of Afro-surrealism, an art form that illustrates struggles of colored people in different art forms and mediums. Cesar married Emmy Cesar in 1936, and together each left their mark on the theoretical doctrine of negritude. Much of her works were published in the Tropique, a cultural journal she co-founded with her husband. 
In her journals, Suzanne reappropriated colonial stereotypes such as the lazy Negro and cannibal to reform and internalize the idea of self perceptions. Modern society, effect on modern society. Negritude inspired a sentiment of self-expression of Black people globally to understand their roots and reconnect with their heritage. Reconnecting Africa and its achievements to history in spite of attempts to skew per perception and strip identity from culture on the continent. Negritude's roots and confirmation of one's being can be connected to other movements even if they're not consciously inspired by Negritude. Pan-Africanism and Afrocentrism, for example, aim to understand and continue the tradition of the accomplishments through literature and culture in Africa creating a connection of one's heritage to their being in modern society. Powerful members of the negative movement, such as Langston Hughes, are also inspirations to creators of today creating unique pathways for self-expression that might not have been popularized otherwise. Negritude also aimed to create uni unity amongst people with African ancestry, which has become crucial to educating those with African ancestry on their heritage, even if it's not credited directly to movements like Negritude. As black people, we must come together and understand our culture. Negritude promotes this idea. Negritude in Modern Society Essentially, the Negritude movement was born out of the concept of Francophone Africans who were responding to the stiff and unrelenting religious and cultural policies surrounding French assimilation. Negritude is comparable to many modern discussions on African literature. This is evident in Things Fall Apart and The Concubine. By looking through Africa's historical experiences, this would enable us to analyze the Negritude founders and assess their influences on these experiences. The undeniable fact remains that the Negritude movement had contributed to and continues to contribute a significant role in discussions on contemporary African literature. Importantly, Negritudism is not at all negativism. Some African literary critics have seen it in a positive light. One of Modern day's notable authors, Romanos Egadu, had cautioned that in discussing negritude in African poetry, one should be guided by what the founders have pointed out as its elements, the value of the civilization of the African world, and these values are to be found in African culture, the African human person, the African worldview, and the African spirit of humanity. Interpretation and analysis on the negritude movement. Interpretation of the movement. The negritude movement meant reaching back to African roots through literature. It was also powerful because reading and writing were things that white society had pro prohibited Africans and African Americans from doing. Not only did African Americans overcome that, but now they used the ability to read and write to their advantage by sharing their history and intellectual writings. Analysis of the movement. The negative movement is broken into three elements. The cultural, cultural identity of Africans, the marinage away from racism in America, and finding themselves within literature that accentuates African ideologies. The African ideologies allowed for people of color to explore who they were before they were colonized and lost their roots and place of being. Conclusion. In conclusion, this movement brought to light the importance of expression of African Americans. Literature helped put the emotions and ideas on paper. Also, movements such as the Harlem Renaissance allowed for African culture to spread throughout the world and for African Americans to cultivate their culture to the world. The Negritude Movement, a branch of the Harlem Renaissance that allowed people such as Langston Hughes to explore their cultural identity.